What's up gamers? <laughs> OnePlus is back with a new OnePlus 11 5G, which right off the bat I gotta say, I don't think we need to put 5G in the naming anymore. Like most new phones are 5G and you're not gonna use it anyways. You don't have 5G. Let me just say that right now. We also have the new earbuds, which James is gonna be covering, so make sure to check that out. But today we're focusing purely on the new phone, which is exciting. It's the latest flagship for OnePlus, and it, you know, the last ones have been creeping up in price and the performance has been good, but maybe not quite what the major competitors do. But I'm excited to take a look at this, and we do have some labs results, so make sure to stay tuned for that. But first, let's take a look at the box. Wow, 11, what a great number. At the bottom here, we have OnePlus Cross Hasselblad, and if you don't know, Hasselblad is a German camera company, their camera, uh, interesting fact for you, was the first one on the moon. Do with that information as you will. <laughs> Otherwise, on the back, we just have the specs and everything like that. In front of us, we have the 16 gig 256 in green, which is a great color. So let's, let's get in here and take a look. Right off the bat there, we got this nice never settle, I'm guessing what's holding the SIM card and booklet here. Oh, okay, no, it's book supposed to. I think it's supposed to rip. I don't know. That's awful. Uh, inside here, a an OTG adapter. So that'd be the USB-C to USB-A. So that's for switching things over from your old phone or plugging in accessories. Safety guides that no one reads. And a lot of stickers. Ooh. I'll make sure to give this to Alex Clark. He'll be so excited. Though we got all this, we don't have a phone case like we did in the Poco phone. Very disappointing. You know, I have high expectations now. If a $160 phone can have a phone case. This one should too. All right, we have the phone, but we're gonna put this off to the side. Oh, okay, we're, we're gonna put it off to the side for a second uh, as we look at what else is in the box here. This is a thick box, which means I'm thinking it has a charger in here. Oh, and it does. And it's even the American one. So this isn't just a EU standard thing. This is a, we love our customers thing. And we got here a 100 watt max Super VOOC charger. <laughs> Super VOOC? Which can do one to 50% in just 10 minutes, and it can charge up to 100% in 25 minutes. So that's pretty fast speeds. <laughs> I don't charge my phone overnight because I want my battery to last as long as possible so I can keep my phones for longer. And something like this would be great. Throw it on the charger when you're in the shower, get out, you already had enough charge for the day. Sounds great. We also have the classic red USB-A to USB-C charger. It's a weird plastic. It almost feels like a plaster scene. Like it's kind of tacky. It, like it keeps its form very strong. No fun colors. Right off the bat, we'll know it's an in-screen fingerprint scanner as it does have the little warning here to use official screen protectors only. And then getting into here, we have the phone itself. Yeah, and this phone is looking really good. So it's a 6.7 inch screen, so it's you know, standard like the 7 Pro or the, uh, you know, S23 Plus kind of thing. But man, this is really pretty. I'm not a huge fan of the curved screens on phones. Like I really like the flat uh, look of like my iPhone, but it's a good balance between that form fitting shape in your hand while still also having that kind of fall off infinity screen. And then on the back, we have the somewhat controversial camera bump. So it's quite large. It kind of looks like a, like a razor, like a shaver. I don't know what they're called. I don't shave, but I think it looks really slick. And this design they've stolen from Samsung where the camera bump just kind of bleeds in from the metal rail does look really good. This color is also really nice. It's like a slate. It's very flat and it matches the industrial look of the phone. On the right hand side of the phone, we have the notification slider. So that'd be uh, whether the ringer's on, on vibrate or completely off. I love this. I wish more phones had this. The iPhone has the silent or the ringer. It'd be cool to have a vibrate completely silent or ringer like this does, but many phones don't have it at all. And I think that's just a wasted opportunity. And then we have our lock button or assistant button or whatever you use it for. On the top here, we have a microphone as well as just a mystery hole. I don't know, I doubt it's a speaker, but try putting stuff in there, I don't know. On the other side here, we have the volume rocker and again, more antenna lines. And on the bottom, we have our SIM tray, microphone, USB-C, and speakers. I'm just gonna check and see if this SIM tray is a dual SIM or not, because I do believe it does support dual SIM. It just might be uh, eSIM. Oh, here we go. So it is two physical SIMs, which is actually my preference. I find it a lot easier than trying to get the eSIM swept around, but that might just be Canadian carriers making things difficult. No SD card expansion or anything like uh, most flagships, unfortunately. Other than that, before we get into there, uh, it is, decently heavy, like if I compare it to a Pixel 7 Pro here, definitely still feels lighter, like it's glass and stainless steel, but it doesn't feel anything too crazy. It's got a good balance to it again, maybe a little bit top heavy with the camera bump, but again, nothing too noticeable. It's just like that normal flagship phone weight. And you can see on the green there, it is starting to get a little bit fingerprinty. And even on the camera bump itself, the camera bump does have a bit of a kind of sparkle texture to it. The front of the phone is pretty standard for just a glass, you know, screen. It's gonna get fingerprints. There is a built-in screen protector on this one, but you're gonna get fingerprints on your screen if you're like me, but just put it in out of your pocket or just smear your phone on your LTT store desk pad and everything will be all right. 
<laughs> well, you get mad at me when I do it. <laughs> no, don't, don't show the B cam on this. All right, last thing to do is turn it on. But first, let me turn you on to our sponsor, Secret Lab. Thanks to Secret Lab for sponsoring today's video. Secret Lab chairs are engineered to keep you incredibly comfortable for long hours at work and play. Their Titan Evo 2022 chairs keep you feeling comfortable for longer. It has four-way lumbar support, an ultra comfortable line of different seat materials, and more. All chairs come with up to a five-year extended warranty and a 49-day return policy. So head to the link in the description and check out Secret Lab today. If I don't lift it up, it's not broken. Man, right off the bat, the bezels on this thing looks great. So it's a 6.7 inch screen, as I said earlier. It's a 1440 QHD plus 120 Hertz, super fluid AMOLED LTPO3 screen. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's got everything. What that means is obviously it's AMOLED. It's gonna look great. Blacks are black, but LTPO means that it can go from 120 Hertz all the way down to one Hertz. So it's only gonna refresh one frame a second. So like you're always on screen or when you're reading an ebook, you'll barely be using any batteries because instead of refreshing at 60 frames a second, we'll only be doing one frame a second. So that's great. Brightness on the screen is decent. It gets to 500 nits when you're just turning it up to its max, but it can go up to 800 nits in auto mode and 1300. Well, damn day. But it can go up to 800 in auto mode when it knows you're outside and 1300 nits peak brightness when you're watching HDR concerts or anything like that. And this phone does have HDR, so there's HDR 10 plus as well as Dolby Vision, so things should look good and we'll take a look at that later. As for OS, so it's running Oxygen OS based on Android 13, so it should be, you know, pretty modern or what you would get with Pixel or anything like that. Oxygen OS is pretty minimal, doesn't have any huge, huge quirks or anything like that, and the uh, bloatware is pretty minimal. We've installed some stuff on here, so what you're seeing on screen isn't, you know, what you're gonna get out of the box, but yeah, it feels good. Lots of different settings for changing things to customize your phone the way you like it. Uh, myself, I like gestures, I like dark mode. I want that full QHD plus screen instead of the lowered resolution that gives you a little bit longer battery. But yeah, it's pretty minimal. So let's take a look at something a little bit more important and take a look at the camera. All right, so for cameras, we have our main 50 megapixel, 24 millimeter wide main camera, which has optical image stabilization and face detection autofocus. Again, things that are pretty standard on flagships. Then we have our 48 megapixel ultra wide. So that's 115 degrees. That's gonna be quite wide. I actually really like ultra wide, so I'm excited to take a look at that one. And then we have our 32 megapixel telephoto, and that is a 2X shooter. So that should look pretty good. Again, if you use telephotos, great. I myself don't take a ton of zoomed in photos on my phone. All right, we've got a camera open here and the UI is the same as every other phone. So let's just get right into taking some pictures. Wow, there's one X, <laughs> two X, 0.6 looking good. So this one goes all the way up to 20 X. Oh wow, he's really, he's really going for it. Oh wow, look at him. And I like the little preview it gives you as well. So you can see the whole frame as if you weren't zoomed in 20 times. I should have been taking a video though. Is there stuff going on? And man, the colors look really good. There isn't a ton of distortion. Like the lines look pretty straight. I noticed zooming in, the suede textures of the stuffies and pillows do look a little odd and the color's a little bit off, but the colors are pretty consistent. And again, off camera, it is quite dark. So there's not a huge loss of quality or sharpness going out uh, the farther away it gets into the darkness. It doesn't seem to be trying to lift up the shadows too much and overexposing in different areas because of that. It just looks like a strong all around photo that for something that I just kind of flipped around and took a photo of, looks good. This is a cool feature. I don't know if this has been in OnePlus phones forever or anything like that, but being able to just rotate your thumbs and rotate the photo, super convenient. James tried with this Pixel and it does not do that. So thumbs up for a cool feature there. The phone does 8K at 24 FPS, 4K at 30 and 60 FPS, and then 1080p up to 240 FPS. So you have a lot of different options there. <laughs> wow. Wow, can even switch to the ultra wide. You can't see that in a lot of phones. It has trouble switching between the lenses, but that's, that's pretty convenient. And again, the shake test. Oh, who's that guy? Shake test pretty good. It doesn't feel like you can really tell that I'm shaking the phone back and forth. Video looks pretty good. You can tell a little bit when it's switching between the lenses. There's a little bit of a hesitation as it's changing between them, but it was pretty smooth. Again, not something that every phone can do. And the mic is okay. I feel my voice is a little bit tinny in it, especially as somebody who has a deeper voice, but I don't think it's that bad at all. All right, now we're gonna be taking a selfie. Is it, oh, that's a video. I think I look a little over sharpened. My beard hairs are very pronounced, but. Hey, it's a thing. I'm gonna try moving around to get different lighting here to see how it exposes. It does keep my face very consistently lit, which will be nice for video calls or anything like that. But again, it's not the most appealing looking video. All right, let's take a photo this time, something more purposeful. But first I gotta check to make sure there's no AI settings on like there were in the Poco phone. Natural. Nose? Okay, <laughs> let me take a, no, don't change skin texture. Zero. But it looks like it is, even the natural one, it is doing things. All the meters are showing that there's something on, so I'm just gonna try flicking it all off. Shame on you. 
feels gross to have things like cheek and nose reducers on by default. People probably won't go through all of these options to turn them off. The photo definitely looks a lot less sharp now, though my beard does still have kind of like a weird HDR effect. I'm gonna try turning that off as well. Yeah, no, just not a great selfie shooter. For someone with a hole punch, you have the excuse of having to shoot through a screen. I will give it this after looking at the photo. It looks like the preview that you see when you're about to take a photo is way sharper, but then it just smooths everything down after you take the picture, which I tried to turn off. So, disappointing to say the least. And for RAM, we have 16 gigs, uh, plus four you'll notice, which is kind of like the Poco phone, where it has a kind of a RAM expansion mode, where it saves some of your files into the flash storage of your phone itself, and then will access it as if it were RAM on your phone. Some people in the Poco video were concerned that wears out your storage, so maybe you'll want to turn it off. You can expand it up to 12 gigs, which is insane. I don't know why you'd ever need 28 gigs of RAM. It's a child's phone. This is a phone for men. Since this has the new Snapdragon in it, we sit over to Labs to see what they think about it. So Labs was super impressed with this phone. The OnePlus 11 is 17.5% faster at cold launching games, which means they're not in the background, uh, on average compared to the Pixel 7 Pro, and is 12.5% faster recalling them from the background of the Pixel 7 Pro. And gameplay is rock solid. It stays in line with other major flagships at a solid 60 FPS in most games at max quality settings where applicable, with the exception of Diablo Immortal. They think there's an optimization issue as it doesn't line up with most other devices that they tested. On the heat side of things, thermals were also handled very well. 20 minutes of PUBG Mobile with max graphics only saw a four degree increase in temperatures for the CPU and a five degree increase on the GPU. We don't have any sort of official rating for labs, but they said it was really good thermals. On top of all of that, the 5,000 milliamp hour battery also was an extremely strong performer. Labs estimated to be over eight hours of Genshin Impact when playing at max graphic settings on a full charge and up to 12 and a half hours for PUBG Mobile and COD Mobile. Insane. Finish him. A lot of the performance probably chalked up to the new Hyperboost gaming engine, which OnePlus says uses machine learning to stabilize frame rates and find an ideal balance of power consumption and performance by learning and adapting to the user's game, whatever that means. Oh, the fingerprint scanner. All right, we're gonna try setting up the fingerprint scanner here. One thing I am disappointed about already is it doesn't have the cute smiley face from that Poco phone. This guy's cool, I guess. Uh, as I've said before, I am a fan of the in-displays fingerprint scanner. I know some people say they have performance issues with it, but I don't seem to have a problem. All right, let's see how fast this is. Not bad. Crab Rave time. <laughs> I unironically like Crab Rave. You heard it here first, I like Crab Rave. That sounds pretty good. It has a very wide sound stage. This earpiece does get quite loud. A lot of time you'll see dual speakers and then you put this up to your ear and it's playing at like a quarter of the volume as the main speaker. But this one feels really well balanced. Let's compare it to the Pixel 7 Pro. Crab Rave. I'm on my personal YouTube. Crab Rave is the top result. Wow, those speakers are really good. They get really loud. I think this is probably the worst, the Pixel 7 Pro. Then when you compare the OnePlus to the iPhone, the iPhone has that issue I was talking about earlier where it's way louder out the main speaker than it is the earpiece, so it doesn't have that wideness that the OnePlus has, and it doesn't have the volume. Can't believe I'm saying it, but I think this, this is beating out the iPhone on speaker quality. But screen quality looks great. Very clear, very bright. It's definitely got like a vibrancy mode on, so things look pretty colorful, but there's usually settings for things like that, so you can tone it to exactly the way you like it. Now for the most important part, price. So when OnePlus started, they shook the industry by being flagship killers at an accessible price. But as you can see, prices have kind of started to grow with OnePlus phones a lot. And the OnePlus 11 5G starts at $699.99 US. And you might be saying, that's still very expensive, and yes it is. But when you compare that to the Pixel 7 Pro, which is 900, and the iPhone 14 Pro, which is 1,000, and the Galaxy S23, which is $799. So you're saving a couple hundred bucks when compared to those other alternatives. And you look at the screen being really quite good, the speakers being awesome, the battery life lasting quite a long time, and the camera being pretty decent. Whoa, it's me in the future. I know this is a little odd. We don't do reviews or anything here, but I took the OnePlus 11 with me to San Francisco for Samsung Galaxy Unpacked, and I was not super impressed with the camera after using it more. It seemed like the video really struggled. And even when I went to get some of the footage off the phone to put in the video here, a lot of it corrupted, which means it was completely unusable. This is a pre-release phone, so maybe some things will be smoothed out, but it was really over sharpened. A lot of the video quality, even on the main cameras was choppy and didn't really do well in bright or dark situations. And the portrait mode also struggled a lot and had a weird kind of cut issue around the phone. 
not super impressed. One thing I found myself liking a lot more, which was surprising, was Hasselblad's X-Pan mode, which gives you an extra long image and you can only adjust exposure before you shoot. And there's no other extra filtering or changes that you can make. It's all just the camera itself. And I enjoyed what I was able to get out of it. Anyways, like I said, not a full review. Just wanted to let you know though, this is a bit of a miss. Back to me. I think you have a really solid package here and it might be something worth checking out for the first time in a long time. When we released the OnePlus 10 video, a lot of people were saying that the OnePlus 7 was the last good OnePlus phone. And I might be being optimistic, but this seems like one of the first phones that is actually deserving of this flagship pricing. So if it takes all those boxes, it might be worth checking out. By the time you're watching this, pre-orders have already opened and general sale goes up on February 16th. So it might be something to keep your eye on. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. What do you think? Is OnePlus back? Is this still a miss? Let us know down in the comment section below. Otherwise, maybe you should go check out James's video on the OnePlus Buds. Are they any good? The green's a nice color.